to Vos by train and as I said before on the train, the second part will be done uh, by bus. So now we're going from Vos and back to Flom by bus. On our way we'll have two stops. The first one is going to be in about 10-15 minutes. It's going to be the waterfall of Twinna or the Twinna waterfall, uh, which is actually one of my personal favorite waterfalls. And believe me, I've seen a lot of them, being Norwegian and being a guy. Uh, later on, we will go up to um, a place called Stelheim, we'll pass the Stelheim Hotel. The reason why we're taking up the Stelheim Hotel, which lies at about 1,200 feet uh, above sea level, is that we're going down a very, very special road, which is actually one of Norway's well visited Nader fjords. We'll have a stop there, it's a beautiful fjord, you'll have time to do some souvenir shopping if you like to do that, or it's a cafe there, or a restroom, and it's a beautiful view over the night up here there, and afterwards we'll go back to Flum, and at the pair of Flum. So that was the program for today, and of course I'll be back with all the details, all the information as we go along. It was just to give you a view, overview of, of the program for the rest of the day. buildings that you see, including the greenhouse as well, is actually a high school. All that is a high school. It's a specialized high school and it specializes in agriculture and forestry. So if you want to work within forest or agriculture, if you want to be a farmer, you should go to this high school. Me, myself, I went to music high school. There are other high schools such as sports high school, uh, mechanics high school, um, and so on and so on and so on. The list goes on and on and on. But I mean, by those types of high schools, I would say, because in this town, you find that one of the highest, not the highest, but one of the highest percentage of Olympic winners, counting per inhabitant. So a lot of Olympic winners come from here, and all of those uh, have done some, some sort of ski sports. Or so today, you really get to see a lot of beautiful things, because it's been raining now for about three weeks in a row. We're sort of tired of having rain now, but it's not raining too much today, so we're really lucky because if you look up to your left hand side, you see all those little rivers going on the hillside. You'll see a lot of them as we approach beautiful weather, but you would have the teeny tiny waterfalls, the small rivers, you won't have that much water. But if it's horrible weather, for example, if it's raining a lot, you'll have this huge, beautiful, big waterfall. So you always get a little bit of, of advantage, no matter what the, no matter, matter what the rain is. Um, it's not normal for us for it to rain three weeks in a row. It, well, like we have had a couple of days with nice weather, for example, yesterday. Um, so it's not normal that it rains so much, uh, but. July is actually the warmest month of the year, so normally we get around 80 degrees, wow. in fact. But that's only in July. And we have the very good feelings again. Of course, we didn't have 40 feet of snow. For those with the metric system, it's about 12 meters of snow. Um, of course, we didn't have that amount of snow everywhere around in Norway, but we had we had a lot of snow, just to give it an extreme. Um, combine, combine that with a very cold March, April.
Look at the water, Allie. To show that you're nice to your animals, now you're nice to your Nissa, you would every 24th of December, this is a very strong tradition that is being done by, I would say, all children under the age of seven, they would put out a plate of porridge on to, into the farm to show that, for your Nissa, to show that you're nice to your Nissa, so the Nissa has to be nice to your animals. Now since this, this is being done every single Christmas, the Norwegian name uh, for Santa Claus is actually Yule Nissa, which is the Christmas Nissa. Because we always uh, think about Christmas when we think about the Nissa, the Yule Nissa is what is the Norwegian word for Santa Claus. The farmer woke up one day, he saw some huge rocks out in his river, and he couldn't explain how it got there because it wasn't, certainly wasn't there the night before. He would say, oh, maybe it's the Norwegian troll that went out into the sunlight because a uh, Norwegian troll can't stand the sunlight, he explodes and turns himself into a rat during the daytime and he turns himself back to a troll uh, when, it, uh, when it's night again. So that's the way he could explain those rocks that were in his river. Um, the Huldra was the explanation of missing men from the farm. If a man was missing from the farm, uh, we, uh, the Norwegian people would then say, oh, it's probably the Huldra that I lured him into the forest and into the mountain where she's keeping him there for the rest of his life, so that's why we can't find him again. The other reason is to scare children. Now I know this sounds very mean, uh, but before, just three generations ago, my grandmother's generation, she was one of seven siblings, and that wasn't very uncommon at that time. Normally there were seven, eight, nine children at a time in a family. Now the mother worked very, very hard in the farm, but making dairy products. You could drag it down to the bottom of the sea and keep it there for the rest of your life, and you better not go nearby the waterfall or the bridge because it's trolled underneath.